Hey there, Internet. I'm your boy John from John Grave Show, and at the and uh, this is the end of the year. One second. I wanted to take this time to most likely welcome everybody. Oh, well, say a happy New Year's if this video is not up before uh, January 1st of 2014. Or if people are checking this out on uh, in January 2014, I would like to say, hey, we made it another year, and hey, uh, it's another year for gaming, another year for anime, and hey, it's another year for all of our favorite mediums to most likely continue, and we all can pretty much share, um, uh, share, love, mock, ridicule, whatever you want to say. And yeah, that is pretty much all I have to say. So yeah, let me get into my top five of most likely the top five games that most likely I liked or at the very least stood out this, this year. Now mind you, I do have two honorable mentions of games that most likely a lot of people probably might not, um, agree with. So yeah, let's go ahead and get, get right in this. Number five, bam, DMC. So yeah, what did I think of that game? Uh, what did I think of DMC? DM DMC was possibly one of the sleeper hits of the for the past few years, ever since uh, its inception of being a remake of the original Devil May Cry, and give or take of what did this game bring new to the table, which kind of made it stand out from its previous um, incarnations, well, incarnations, and also kind of make it kind of one of my top picks of this year. Apparently, it was a... Well, now, mind you that necessarily for what it was, it was a Devil May Cry game all the way through, no matter what anyone says. And also, give or take, with how the characters were most likely portrayed and all that was by the book stuff. The combat was interesting. The, um, uh, the way how that you beat enemies... The way how that enemies kind of like played out. It was an interesting thing, even though it was super simplistic and it was easier to get into. What I will say about this one was that it was easier for non-fans to pick it up, play it, enjoy it, whether it be story or gameplay-wise. So yeah, that's kind of why that one's number five. So yeah, moving on to number four. Number four, Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, a game like that, pretty much it did, well, when looking at the of uh, the beginning few games of Bioshock Infinite. Well, them going from the going from the undercity water, I um, mean the the underwater city Rapture, going um, uh, and them coming up with like um, with uh, them continuing on with uh, the fall of Rapture in both Bioshock One and Bio Bioshock Two. It was pretty interesting to kind of see them shift gears and sort of bring a city in the sky alike. Um, I mean, um, uh, to life. And also, on top of that, there's also this little uh, thing of them honestly kind of making it a time travel travel story, which honestly isn't that, uh, which honestly, for most of the time travel stories that are brought up throughout the years, I do kind of have to applaud this one for, hon for honestly um, buckling down and actually trying to make us feel something for the characters first, rather than just give everything to just random shooting and everything. They actually had a story to tell and most likely they were they were they were too uh true uh, to it so much so much so that people were actually having debates upon the story mode uh based on the ending of the game. So yeah, that's why Bioshock Infinite is possibly one of my top five games of, of 2013. So solely because even though it did downgrade the gameplay, it still brought brought an interesting and very, very, very very near to, um, um, uh, compelling story to it. So, yeah, that's kind of it's one of my tops. Moving on to number three Metal Gear Rise of Revengeance. Metal Gear Rise of Revengeance was one of those games which was built around a gimmick. Luckily for us, that, 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 that gimmick was actually something that, that was pretty awesome and something new that pretty much not too many games really tried to perfect over the years. Which that the grand mechanic of the game was just cutting things. That That's about it. Just cutting bridges, people, cutting most likely melons. They were basically like just saying, hey yo, if you can cut it, most likely, I mean like, uh, like uh, if we can model it, we're basically going to make a game in which that you can cut it. Which is honestly something that I seriously wasn't all that interested in until I got the game. And most likely when I got the game, it was something that did honestly blow me away. Way mostly because 
in some way, shape, shape or form, they kind of use it. They kind of use. They kind of utilize it for basically every, every for every boss fight. For every for every boss fight, there is something. Well, minus the blade wolf battle until you beat him. But um, for all of the bosses, there was always something there which that like once you beat them, or there was some sort of mechanic built into the uh, fight which had you cutting something, which honestly was the interesting thing. Now. Now, in terms of this this game's like length, the problem with the game is that it is pretty short. But at, but at the same time, there's also another reason why the why this game is on my top top list. I do die and knock it down a bit because it is a bit short. But or at least like it doesn't kind of like respect the whole stealth thing as much, and it doesn't feel like how the original Metal Gears do. But I can put that aside. But in terms of this one, it actually feels like an actual video game because you can actually unlock things when uh, when you collect stuff and beat the game, which is something that I'm actually happy for because now most of the game isn't isn't downloadable DLC. So yeah, moving on to number two, GTA Five. GTA 5 is one of those games, or at least there, is, or at least there comes a time when Mo, uh, when most likely Rockstar puts out a game, and most likely it kind of feels different from, from one of its uh, previous games, uh, such as like how, no matter what you thought about Grand Theft Auto 4, it was, it was somewhat of a graphical improvement from from 3, especially seeing as that you did go back to Liberty City. You know, now mind you that that in this one not only do we have one main character, we don't have two, we have three. And just like in the previous game, or at least like the previous game that I just praised on uh, on uh, on his graphics, this one I, uh, honestly does a major upgrade in the game that once was San Andreas. Now mind you, the map is just a little bit different. However, it is pretty much a it is a vast improvement of what the original one was. It also it's also kind of one of the only games that I've played that honestly made me hate every single one of the um, uh, supporting characters for two of the main char characters. I hate all of my uncle's family, and I hate all of Frank and his family and friends. However, however, even with all that, I still kind of like enjoy this game way more than I should because the missions are engaging. The heist part, I mean, I mean, like the elaborate heist missions are also basically. To me, by far, the biggest thing about the game, um, and honestly, seeing all three of the of the main characters working together upon certain missions, it is actually pretty. It's something that that when like a game gives me like three op, uh, op, uh, optional characters, I pretty much love just love watch uh, just watching them all just work together and sort of get things done. So yeah, Grand Theft Auto Five, my number two. Now, if Grand Theft Auto is my number two, you really gotta ask the question of, so yeah, what is so yeah, what is your number one? I'll get uh, I'll get with you on that in just a second. Now's up for my runner-up, or at least my honorable mentions of this year. I don't have a card for those because I didn't feel like making them. However, give or take, for my honorable mention num number one, it go or at least number two, it goes to. Tomb Raider, the video game in which that it was supposed to be a growing art for Laura Croft and the way how they made the game, pretty much it was it was pretty interesting to most likely play it and also every character in there minus Laura was basically useless. I mean like the reason why this game is in my is in my uh honorable mentions thing is solely because if you really think about it, they kind of um, paraded, uh, they kind of said that, yeah, the story of this game is going to be the turning point. Yeah, I saw the story, and every character in it, minus Laura, was useless or blatantly, obviously evil. So, yeah, it gets some points back based on what it promised me. However, give or take, with 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 this gameplay, it was really, really good, and, and I didn't play the online because I didn't care about the online. So, yeah, moving on to number two. My num my number two, or at least my number one, is Beyond Two Souls. I know, I know, I am not supposed to hate on the game in which that uh, which that David Cage most likely put man his heart and soul in, and then tried man to like tell me like yeah this is going to be the greatest game ever because higher graphics and whatever. However, I do have to say this. That game. 
if you line everything up, the game is alright. If you most likely play through the game like how I did, it is pretty... Everything is incoherent, everything is problematic, and most likely... Everything is... That game could have been, been so much better if they would have just placed things dif uh, differently. However, I will say this. Ellen Page, greatest actor ever for most likely putting up with the David Cage stuff and also giving me a story and a character in which that I pretty much, you know, saw saw as a pretty cave, capable woman. Not so much to, um, I forget old boy's name, but, um, not so much to his character because he was just pretty much evil and crazy just like out of nowhere give or take that that one is my number one so yeah moving on to I mean that is my number one runner-up pick so yeah moving on to my number one for their for the year was anybody surprised if I was if uh, would, would, it, would anybody be surprised if I picked this one yeah let me slow this up a little bit Bam. the last of us number one for The Last of Us, what can I say about, about The Last of Us? I will be honest. The gameplay of it is does honestly remind me a lot of Tomb Raider. Mostly because it is a third-person shooter, which most likely does emphasize physical hand-to-hand -hand combat. Even though, even though mostly in Tomb Raider, it was mostly about gun upgrades and weapon upgrades and you knowing your your surroundings and weapons in this one they kind of did the same thing but but to flip it to where you have limited items and also you kind of have to focus on getting focus on surviving with with all of your weapons and wit which is actually a good thing however for this game the reason why it's pushed up to the top for me it isn't because of his gameplay it isn't because of it wasn't because of all the uh, other stuff. It was because it was the one game this year that po that most likely didn't didn't try and overachieve what it what it was going for. It was basically just trying to tell you an interesting story with giving you some uh, familiar with 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 utilizing familiar game controls and helping the characters pro uh, progress throughout the story. Mind you that that some games did it did it better, but in terms of this one, it was pretty good. I loved, I, uh, I liked it, and it's still sitting on my game or shelf. So, hey, I'll catch you guys next time. Please let me know what you thought of my list. And, hey, I will see you guys um, in the new year, 2014. Hopefully then, man, we will, we will have way more games, and we can do this again. So, yeah, I'm out. You keep um, all you guys out there. You keep, um, you keep playing video games. You keep watching that anime. And, hey. I will still be here, man, to uh, give you updates upon all the stuff that I like, love, and hate. So, hey, peace out.